Hello and welcome back to the third year statistic course with QGIS on R. The main topic of this course is structural analysis for Kriegin co Kriegin interpolation. This is just a summary of the third lesson of the course, and today we are going to be talking about directional semivariogram cloud. At the previous video, we learned how to create the omnidirectional semivariogram cloud. We was working with the Muse River data set and we created this graph where we can see the omnidirectional semivariogram cloud for the row data. This graph is just a scatter plot between the lag distance h in meters and the semivariance of the scene concentration in ppm. This graph is representing all the possible combinations that we can create with a pair of samples. It means that in this graph we have a representation of all the possible directions. Let's go to see this concept with a different slide. In this case, the yellow lines are representing four different possible directions. We are taking one sample as the origin and then we put together this sample with four different samples and the result is four different directions. The first direction is approximately 15 degrees. The second one is about 45 degrees. The third one is about 105 degrees. And the last one is approximately 135 degrees. All the measurements has been taken with respect to the north and this angle is known as an azimuth angle. Remember that at the previous video we calculated how many combinations we can create with 155 samples, and the total it was 11,935 possible combinations. It means that we have the same number of possible directions. Then the point is how we can make the representation of a pair of samples that are located in a specific direction. And that is what is this lesson about it. Then the first thing that we are going to do in this lesson is create the algorithm to plot a directional semivariogram cloud. Then the parameters that are important in this case is the beam angle and also the tolerance angle. We are going to be talking about these parameters in this lesson. Also, we are going to be working on the construction of the bin to calculate the directional semivariogram cloud. In addition, we are going to introduce a third parameter related with the bin construction. In this case, it's going to be the bandwidth. Later, we are going to place the bin in our data set to see what is the relation with the bin and the information that we have on the map. We are going to place the bin in an angle of 45 degrees and we are going to see some of the directions that we can get with our pair of samples located inside the bin. The point with these illustrations is to have a better understanding of the directional semivariogram cloud. The next thing that we are going to see is how we can have a full coverage of our area when we are working with different angles for the directional semivariogram cloud. In this point, the important thing is related with the tolerance angle, and we are going to be talking about it. Later, we are going to see what is the differences between the big construction when we are working with uh, samples that are located systematically and when we are having samples that are located randomly or they are not followed a systematic way. In this case, we are going to have two different types of bins and it is something really important 
to know how to deal with this kind of information. Also, in this lesson, we are going to see how to calculate properly the beam direction and why the range is from 0 to 179 degrees. Later, we are going to work on the differences between the beam for a directional semivariogram cloud and the beam for omnidirectional semivariogram cloud. We are going to be playing with the beams on the map and I'm going to give you the reason because when we have a beam that is uh, 0 degrees of direction and 90 degrees of tolerance angle, we are considering this beam as an omnidirectional one. At the end of the lesson, we are going to create new scripts to work with data with trend. In that case, we can use that scripts to create the directional semivariogram cloud when we have a trend in our data to be removed, okay? Remember that this course is not available in YouTube. If you want to have full access to the course, just go to the GeoRGB community website at gscourse.online. Go to the tab Courses. Then select the third year statistic course. Get enrolled, then you can start the course. And then you are going to have full access to the lessons. And also if you have any questions, you can make the questions over here. And also when you are in the website and you get enrolled in the course, you can download all the scripts that we are using. Just click here to download the scripts and then you can use that scripts in your QGIS. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you on the next lesson.